Hey buddy, this is Matt with a little cash homestead. Let me go ahead and try and switch the camera. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna give you kind of a walk around in our homestead, and I apologize about the time you're gonna spend looking at the ground. But first we're gonna kind of walk up the drive. There. Oh, and it has been snow and rain and mud. So that's what we got going is a lot of snow and rain and mud and we'll be traipsing through the mud a little bit here so the first thing we're going to do is walk up the drive I'll kind of give you little tour of what we're doing here okay so I mentioned that I live kind of on a little ridge and you hear all that that's the mud all right so we'll just trace it through the mud and here comes a giant puddle we have to kind of regrade a lot of the gravel here all right so you can see from our road that the snow and the rain and the mud is just taking its toll on the road and then basically up here what we started to do we started to do plantings to grow ourselves in a wall around the property some of the plants survived some of them didn't this ground up here by the road is extremely harsh and I'll show you when we get to another section it's not nearly as harsh here we got some little ewes that are still alive uh, but the idea here's some of the spots where we we did have plants that just didn't make it. It was very hard to irrigate this area initially. But now that we have that drip tape, I think it'll be a lot easier. We can probably put some barrels out and kind of drip tape along. I mean, it's still very, very muddy. So walking around the front edge here on the ridge, you notice that side goes down. That side goes down. So right on the top of the ridge there we have more plants i'm going to take a brief digress here i'm going to walk right over here these are asparagus boxes they don't look like much now but in the spring we actually need to kind of weed these and cut them back i'm going to go ahead and let's we'll go ahead cut back all them shoots there all this old growth here I don't really mess with it. I just take it and I just throw it back in the box there. So the way I've been doing it is each year I just add a few more plants. I got like three boxes so far. And we'll add more dirt to them. I do that every year. It settles. I'm going to go ahead and clip these off too. While I'm here. And yes, I do pretty much walk around with a set of pruners in the back pocket. You don't, you know, while you're there, you might as well do something sometimes. Comes down to that. So we'll just turn those off. That one's gonna need a little bit more work. We'll do the same thing over here. We'll just go ahead and prune off. You can see this one is filled with leaves, and that's okay. But I always wait till this asparagus turns into this dead just this dead mess and then I cut it back okay I can't uh, see there we go I threw the chat icon up I will try to answer your questions if I can while we're doing this but mm. I'm just gonna go ahead and put 
the back. Well, there's a lot more here than I thought, but we might come back to this. Yeah, I think we're probably going to come back to that. We'll see. Something today that gave me some really good ideas for doing that, but I like to use metal as well. And this is another asparagus bed here. And this one's made out of a egress well. This is what's left of an egress well. Of what was left of an egress well. An egress well, for those of you who don't know, is egress well allows you to put in egress windows so that you could climb out and go to something like that. So right there, again, we still survived uh, our and this ground here is going to need a lot more work to get that border grown in. All right, we're driveway, which is mud. It's just, it's mud right now. Okay, and then I'll show you what I mean by this ground being inhospitable. It's right there by the road, and it's just filled with gravel. It's gravel and clay. Um, use grow there, and slowly bamboo will spread. I planted uh, one stick of bamboo like our first year, I think, and it's taken this long to spread. One of the things that we did do is I did buy a bunch of bamboo seed. I don't know how hard that's going to get started to get started, but we're going to find out. And then this area here is our windbreak. This was here when we got here, and it extends down through the road, which is our road. I own most of that road. And this is on our north side. So we're trying to establish some windbreak where we were just walking. Trying to get that windbreak established as well. Here's the issue. Uh, we're gonna walk down into the trees here for a minute. Ooh, ow. There is a lot of, and you may not catch it on the uh, video, but there is a lot of Rosacomina back in here, which is just, it's one of those, ow, ah, got me again. I'm wearing thermal insulated pants here. But there's a lot of Rosa Comina back here. And that was brought in. Um, my The story that I got on Rosa Comina is that it was actually brought in in the 40s and 50s as a way to kind of help um, with living shrubs or uh, living fences. And that's actually what we're going to do with it. A lot of this area is good is going to have to be dug out which which sucks and the reason that's happening is within 25 feet of the road excuse me let me switch the chat mode there okay so within 25 feet of the road or offset 25 feet of the road i should say a lot of this has to come that come out because we're having a new septic system put in that's been scheduled and rescheduled many times <laughs> I'm not going to get in the full extent of that until they start digging it. Um, but when they do start digging it, I am going to live stream that stuff as well. Uh, but a good chunk of that has to come out because it is a pressure emitter setup. So it's very shallow. Our current system is the 12 inch perk pipe that winds through. And like I said, I'm not going to get into why we're changing it or why it has to be changed until they actually start digging it out. This is one of the things that happened when we had some work done here and the contractors who did the work, um, I didn't hire them. I probably would have vetted them a little better. Um, they were hired by another outside firm. We'll get more into that later. And it's all related to the septic system once I start digging up the septic. Okay, so this whole run all the way down the property, this was filled with vegetation which made a beautiful windbreak and a nice living fence and all kinds of other things. Now I've put some of it back like this locust here. I planted a bunch of these and locusts are nasty. They're covered in these thorns. This one actually uh, thrived. It did very well. And I might try to clone off of this. I don't know. I'm not super great at cloning, but I need some more materials before we do that. And then like this down here, this is one, I'm gonna move down here. Ow. This is that Rosa Comina. 
if you look at it, it is just embedded with these nasty, nasty thorns. And the roses are just like little pink berries. Um, and ow, yeah, it's nasty. Um, but the, that's kind of the idea, is to make a very, very nasty perimeter. One, to keep people out, and two, to keep animals in. When we get to the point where we uh, start rebuilding our flocks. We had flocks before. Here's another one of these um, uh, black locusts. You see they're nasty. And I planted like 50 of these along this run and very few of them made it. I bought them bare root. Um, and I'm just not, see this one here, this is not a black locust, but see that nectarine fiber, I could probably clone that. And I know it'll grow in this area and it's been difficult to get stuff to grow in this area. Cedars do. But I don't know if I want my whole property line covered in cedars, which I might, you know. But let's just take a quick look here. Okay, now it's winter time. But in summer, imagine that thicket all bloomed out. And that was all the way down this run. So that's something that we're going to have to work on. And I have estimates for that. And we'll talk more about that in a future video. As well as why all this got screwed up. Same thing here. This used to run all the way down. Now this is a particularly wet area. This is the wash. We have our culvert pipe that goes under our road. That acreage over there, I own that as well. And then, so all this has to be rebuilt. This over here, this is a tree that came down in a windstorm and it landed in that tree over there and it was a real kind of there's a video on there it says uh tree taken out by wind or something and that that tree was pretty difficult to get unstuck out of there so and then this tree here had to come down because it was tangling into the power lines and uh we just agreed with the power company to go ahead and take it down so we're gonna have to plant in there to get something going there all right now we're moving into this area where I've been setting up my mushrooms. About to do some fence row, road clearing. Oh, oh, see, I'm trying to read that, and it went away. About to do some fence row, road clearing too. We'll be leaving as much brush and other trees for privacy. Okay, so see, a lot of us have the same kind of mindset. So like this is a brush pile from actually that tree. That tree was a gnarled mess. It was uh, very difficult to get down. And it's just been raining and snowing and just being obnoxious this winter. So all that brush is gonna have to be hauled off and we're gonna probably charcoal it or, or something like that. You guys have seen this in other videos, but this is our <coughs> mushroom area, okay? These are our experiment beds. You can see all the little spots. That's where the plugs are waxed. We're hoping that we'll get... Um, this is our cold fruiting shiitake. So we're hoping that we'll get our cold fruiting shiitake through here. <coughs> and these are all new. new. Um, so it might be, you know, mid to late market season before any of this stuff comes in. <coughs> if it comes in this year, excuse me. It's still chilly out. Uh, it's 40 something degrees, but... You know, we've got, uh, I got a couple of sweaters on. Okay, so, uh, and again, we're hoping to fruit around the edges here. I'm pointing and you're not seeing because my finger's not in camera. So we're hoping to fruit around the edges and then fruit in the middle. Uh, but primarily what I'm going for there is mitochondrial um, decomposition. Nope, I said mitochondrial, I'm sorry. I, I like to say mitochondrial in, the for, in, in, in replacement for mycelial. Uh, mycelial decomposition is what we're looking for, or decomposition by mushroom and by mycelium. Uh, so, same thing here. This is our North Carolina wilds. These were waxed in beeswax. Um, those were waxed in in a soy wax. The soy wax is a lot less expensive. Beeswax, 20 bucks for 2 pounds. Soy wax, $30 for 10 pounds. So you can do a lot better. And then this stack, uh, Lincoln Log stack here, that's our cold fruiters 
and that Lincoln Lodge spec is our North Carolina Wilds as well. And then we're going to put in uh, Shiitake WRs as well. Um, probably a couple of weeks out on putting those in. It takes a couple of weeks for the manufacturer to get the plugs to you. And then what we're doing here, now this area here, we're back at the road. We're going to walk back through here. This area here doesn't look like much now. But in, in the spring and summer, this is like six foot high of perfect privacy. This is like a privacy barrier. It's, it's fantastic. That yucca bush. And I don't know when that little tiny tree came down, but it did. So we're going to clean that up. Uh, but this just grows really thick and really tall. And it's great shade. And ow! Oh, another Rosa Common. No, those Rosa Common are everywhere. And this all grows really thick. And I can't really even get the tractor in here. Uh, it's just so dense. And there's so much vine and everything. The vine and stuff that's in here is wicked. It will stall the tractor. Even It'll even stall the tractor. It's crazy. Uh, oh, wow. There's another tiny one that got broke off in the storms recently. Okay, and then we're coming to this fence. This fence has been here for a while. You can see that it's grown into the tree. It's like halfway through the tree. So this fence has been here for a while. Eventually, I would like to put hog panel or something on this to make our ag production area uh, maybe a little bit more animal friendly. Uh, okay, here's another stack of logs. These are logs that are recently prepped within a few days uh, and those are actually prepped for our uh, shiitake WRs when we get those. Uh, that's brush and again it's been so muddy. It's dried out a little bit today even though it's quite a bit cold. Okay. Um, these are grapevines right here. They're very small. They did grow some. I painted the post where they were at black and I clipped them onto the onto the um, fence with these little tomato clips. You can see them right there. Right there. You can get them from Tech Supply or whatever. Here's the issue that I had. A buddy of mine came over and uh, was doing some work with me and completely accidentally he weed whackered down my plants. And I said, hey, what are you doing? And so the, they all had to grow back and hopefully they, they come back. This one here is doing got one on each side and they seem to be kind of growing to each other which is okay uh, out barbed wire yep so we'll have to I'm gonna train that back up and uh, I'm not super experienced with grapes um, I had a, the chance to get a bunch of them for a really reasonable what I consider to be a reasonable price so I went and, did that grapes and raspberries and then we amended the soil in the holes where we planted them in but that's about it okay i don't know what kind of tree this is but they spread and they spread like madness every time you cut one down two more pop up <laughs> so there's a massive root system under here kind of on this line and in fact it even goes through and over there so the more you cut these down, the more they sucker. And in a way, that can be good if I wanted to grow this in. All right, this area right here, this building is a three-part building. This is my wood shed, which I've used a lot of the wood out of it. I got some junk in here now and and various things. Um, I free cycle and use a lot of junk. So, um, I may not start as junk. I might buy them. Maybe I buy it new. And if my eye didn't work, then I take it apart and put it in here and use it again. Um, but we did have wood stored in here. And then this building here, um, I have pots and planters and fuel still, which I don't use anymore, but I still have. Gasoline prices have dropped to the point where it's fiscally, it's not really worth distilling. Um, because you can get, you can buy the fuel, you know, 
cost effectively enough at this point. Uh, potting mix, extra different things like that inside there is gardening supplies and things like that. These are some branches that I pruned off of a tree and then it snowed and fr freezing rain again. I had like one day outside, I was like, all right, let's go do some work. And I did some work and then we had freezing rain and snow again, this is our compost. These bins are gonna be moved. This isn't the ideal location for it. At the time, I thought it was pretty, pretty decent. That's the ashes from our wood burner and we'll just, uh, there's a, it's an old video, it's probably, I don't know, six, eight, ten months old, uh, where I'm actually, it's called filling polymax grow tubes or something like that. I don't remember the exact name of it. And I just run a tiller in this and run it out in here, and then we scoop it up and fill these grow tubes with it, which I'll show you something else about the grow tubes later on. But we're going to move these. They're probably going to go up there in the field. Um, okay, so we're going to walk back down through our area here. And walk down to here. All right, now because they let the eat, um, my little deer guardian, he uh, he died tragically a while ago, not super long ago, a few months ago. Um, but yeah, he could run off deer too, but there's deer. I have a lot of oak and there's more deer. I have a lot of oak trees, so they come through and just mow down. I mean, this whole place is covered in acorns, which I do. This area here, I don't really sweep that much simply because right here along the fence line, it's just hard to get the tractor and sweeper in here. These are some little little trees that I tried to plant. Some of them took. I think this one took. These are cuttings from what I showed you before. Oh yeah, some of these took. Yep, they're in there. They got root systems to grow and you can feel it when you pull on them. When I showed you along that other fence line, I said, hey, these trees come back, you just keep cutting them and they keep coming back. Oh, took, but in some of these have root. And this one did not take. Look at that. And I don't think this one took. No fertility. This is all clay dirt. Everything here is clay. So um, we'll get to more about using lawn waste, but uh, lawn waste shredded up and swept up. And then we dump it here. And we dump it along the fence lines and all kinds of stuff because I'm trying to grow. Cedar trees grow here. No. Uh, you can see they're all over in various forms or another. And then on the, I own this part here too, past the fence. This actually grows in pretty well with forbs and high grasses and stuff like that. So in certain parts, it does shade quite, quite well. It does create a decent wind break, but come up everywhere. This is a tree, a part of it was dead. We cut it down several years ago. And um, this may not be Rosa Kamina. But I think it is. Uh, this stuff sprang up in its place. I think we're gonna mine this out, like cut it, prune it, and try to transplant it somewhere um, just to make that nasty, nasty border that we want. You know, horse high, bull strong, hog tight, right? Here's a little seed that popped down. Huh, when did that fall over? I don't know. But you can see its root, the root ball by the oak. The same thing here. Wait a minute. Hmm. Oh, no, I got more of them over there. So what we did here is yard waste, ground up yard waste, and we actually planted, transplanted some Osages here. Those, those are the stems of what's left of them. Animals do come and eat them. Um, and they don't have the fruit on them yet. Let's go check the other Osage bed. Okay, you can see them quite a bit here. All right, so this is a, I don't know, probably about a 20 foot run of Osage that we put in. And all I did to put these in is I was out on a job and this is, I was still working at the time. And uh, 
before I decided to completely give up uh, occupation and just make this my occupation. And what I did is I went and I found a whole bunch of Osage apples or Osage orange apples or hedge apples or whatever you want to call them. And I was just on a job and it was out in the, it was in, a, I was actually up in the suburbs of the city, but it was in kind of one of the areas where used to be a lot of farms um, up in the, uh, up in that area. And the developers have just been buying these farms out and buying these farms out and buying these farms out and building subdivisions and stuff. And way back in the corner of a undeveloped subdivision, well, partially developed subdivision, I should say, was a whole thicket of hedge of uh, Osage oranges. And so I just grabbed up a bunch of Osage oranges and I threw them in several buckets and so I sat them out, filled them up with water and let them turn into a slush and ground them up with a paint mixer. You know, like it kind of goes in a drill. And here, let me clear away some of the leaves. And they've taken a while to go, but this is what you call the stun method. Okay? The stun method of planting. So let's say I clear away some of these leaves and you can see right in here, there's thickets and thickets of these little oak trees. This soil here is not very fertile. Uh, it's taken a lot of time to get fertility in the garden areas. And we'll show you that here in a little bit. But you can see, oh, look at the little thorns on those things. Yep. And they're thorny. You can see right here on this one. You can get close enough. There's all kinds of little nasty thorns all over that bad boy. So uh, basically, I just kind of like ground them up with a paint stirrer, paint mixer, and um, took my little uh, mantis, which I rarely use anymore because every time you use it, uh, the mantis is cool for doing a lot of stuff. Uh, it's really great. It was really great, I should say, for when you're using like a dump cart and you're purpose mixing a batch for something. Rather than getting a hoe and a shovel and sacrificing your spine, you can just pick up this little start, this little mantis, throw it in the cart, and in a couple of seconds, just everything's nice and mixed up. Uh, problem with the mantis is every time you use it, you need to work on it. Uh, I'm looking into kind of a 40 volt uh, lithium tool for that, maybe. I haven't decided. Again, Cedars, they just grow everywhere. So all this is Osage bed right here. And then all of this right here, and they may or may not see it real well, but this, this is also black locust. And what I did for that was I was up in the city. Again, this was still when I was, um, you know, thinking that I had to have some job or something, which it turns out I don't have to. Uh, and basically... I pulled into one of the botanical neighborhoods, um, and there was just feet and feet thick of, uh, of locust pods that were just all, all over the street. And I just picked them up. <laughs> I picked them up, and I cracked them open and embedded locust, black locust seedlings all through here. <laughs> that was two years ago. Um, they're taking a little bit of time, and uh, what, the stuff I planted here just didn't grow. All right, this is... This is old, some old cattle. Now, this is here. There's some debate, and my neighbor, on whether or not this is a uh, ranch master. It's pretty hard to see, but it's the ranch master field fence. Also, this was part of the infrastructure that was here when we got here. Um, it's not a super strong fence. Um, I don't know actually who owns this fence. I don't know if I own it. Or if, uh, if the woman next door owns it, which they bought their place about three years after we bought ours. It sat empty for a long time. Good thing about... Okay, so check this out. On the other side of this fence, pretty much where that oak tree is, is the next county. So I still have to abide by my county's rules, even though I'm like 11 feet from the next county. It's ridiculous. Okay. So that's Ranch Master. Uh, there's a lot of stumps and stuff. There was a lot of trees here that I forget the term for it, but they had peeled the bark off of them uh, up to like 10 feet high or something like that to make the tree die. And then I guess they didn't ever cut them down, but I know the house had set empty for a couple of years by the time we got to it. Okay, we're going to start looking at some of the garden stuff. So that was one of those trees. That was one of those trees. See these big piles here? You may not be able to differentiate it, but this is another garden area. Um, this is like a leafy greens garden area. 
it's placed here because of the way it shades. Okay. Uh, we just started on that one maybe. I just started working it last summer. Um, I did briefly have some sorghum and some other things that were growing there. Sorghum and corn and some other stuff. And they just got annihilated by the deer. Um, and I checked into the nuisance law. And I can't shoot the deer out of season. Um, so, you know, do I have to deer blind that whole, whole fence? Maybe. Okay. But... This is how we uh, amend soil. This is how we amend it. We just pile stuff on top of it. I've got a, enough acreage that I can, when I when I initially piled this, this was almost a foot thick. Um, and over the course of the winter, it's broken down. And for the newer garden, since it's so clay, um, I may or may not turn this in. The larger garden plot, we're, we're done turning in. We've turned it in for several years and we're just gonna kind of grow on top of what's there now because it's taking a long time to build the soil there but this is another one this is a 20 by 30 i believe plot and i set this up in that size for a low tunnel um for produce for lettuces and cabbages and things like that i may or may not still do that uh based on some some other things that i'm researching we'll get into that later Our compost tea tank. Um, I have a video with compost tea and an IBC tote. I show you how to do that. Where I make, I use a Polymax grow tube to make the inside of this like a giant tea bag. I also have a bunch of my drip tape and everything that I pulled up um, on top of that. Okay, let's go over to our main garden area here. our market garden where we have these trellises the garden actually runs way past the end of the trellises there this is a 40 by 100 foot so this is 4,000 square feet it ends right where those hoops are and I'll explain those here in a minute this is a 4,000 square foot garden area um, you can't necessarily tell I guess because well when I got leaves mounted all over it and everything and a lot of the surrounding material is still in hibernation and etc but this is a 4,000 foot gardening area and when we got here one of the things I did knowing that the that the ground was crap was I started planting comfrey uh, I might have made a mistake with the comfrey not that I planted it but the variety that I planted. I planted an heirloom comfrey, which I grew from seed. So what do we know about comfrey? Comfrey grows by seed. Most comfrey doesn't, actually. Most comfrey, um, the seed is sterile and it propagates by rooting or root cutting and root spreading. Um, this variety does both. I bought an heirloom variety that propagates by seed as well as by root. So keeping that here is kind of the edge of the garden area here. You can see that I've been working this dirt, and this is nice, good, black, muddy, muddy, but delicious dirt. And I've been, I spent years working on this. And yes, it's got some weeds in it, but, you know, that's what happens. And uh, I think what we're planning on doing here is if everything goes according to plan, then we're going to... Uh, chicken scratch this. The other thing is, our, our chicken have to do, chickens do this. The other thing is that I'm not sure how far I want to develop this this year, simply because I'm in that uh, NRCS program for high tunnel, and I don't know exactly when that's going to break open and when I can go purchase all the equipment and everything and and set that up. So I'm still debating on how we're going to do that here. Uh, you see a lot of. And I kind of like the idea of the cattle panel trellis, um, but what we did was PVC pipe. And so it's just three quarter PVC pipe. And then we zip strip this fencing to it. Why did I use this? Because I had it. I didn't have cattle panels. I did have this stuff. Um, and then the wood frame underneath was the first one. And that was just from some two by fours that I picked up somewhere. I don't remember. I saw them and went, ooh, I could use that. And so some of the strappings are broken. But essentially, it's just PVC pipe. Uh, did I say three quarter? Yeah, three quarter. 
and then I put 45 degrees on it, made a little stab, stab it down in the ground, bend it to where you want it to go. I grew cucumbers uh, all over these things. And then we'll go over here and this area here is where I grow the beans so I can climb this area here. And I might do, uh, depending on how things go, I might actually move the greenhouse forward just a little bit so I don't have to take this thing down um, and then plant my kiwis on the end. I haven't decided on that. There's a limited window to get the kiwis. You can get them from Stark Brothers, which is uh, in Louisiana, Missouri. And they'll ship them to you. Um, but this is where we grow our climbers and our asparagus beans and our Asian long beans and all that good stuff. I've talked to you guys about charcoal before. I make charcoal. I got all this deadfall and prunings and everything like that. I could either light it on fire or I could do something with it. So I kind of <laughs> chop it up and put it in a garbage can and then light it on fire. All right. I'm going to go up here. Grab my busy beverage, right? Same thing here, Ranch Master. Um, <clears throat> now we're going to walk over this is our cheapo greenhouse project you can see that it's called cheap greenhouse project and then i've got a couple of little videos that i added to it where we put in the watering system and stuff the hoses are still frozen i still cannot get water up here uh we're starting to collect some of the snow water finally there's nothing feeding into this oh it smells like watery charcoal god i love that smell watery charcoal it's a great smell so we're trying to get the water lines up here. They're still frozen. Um, but some of the snow is melted in here and I don't have any kind of catchment. <clears throat> I thought about trying to rig a gutter up on this, but the posts on this thing are so small that I, I'm afraid if I drive a screw into it, I'll damage the integrity of the frame. Cause like I said, this is a cheap greenhouse. This is like a $70 greenhouse. Like a $70. Yeah. I'll take a quick look inside here. And again, it is significantly warmer in here. Soil, the air temperature anyway, the soil temperatures are still not so hot. Um, they're warm enough to be muddy, but not warm enough for germination. So I have spinaches and lettuces in here. Doesn't look like anything's gotten to them. You can see how some of it's wicking up through the ground. Um, I got to get those hoses up here but everything's frozen still um you know because i'll get a spurt 40 degrees well i had to wait till noon to get 40 degrees you know so we're still working on trying to get that going it comes down to now in an emergency yes i could take a map can or a propane torch or something like that but i'm not gonna melt my uh, right now. Okay, there's our charcoal area. We're gonna, we're gonna apparently not good enough because all chickens were eaten. So something was still this here. And we sealed in along the bottoms of the coop, patched it up real well, put a root, exactly what's going on here. Comes with the puppies um, getting injured. Not sure. Like I said, I just don't know where the predators were coming in. I could not figure it out. We even stitched all this chicken wire that you're seeing right here. We even use stitching or baling wire, which is, you know, not the most weather resistant thing, but it's cheap and I had some to stitch all the stuff together, zip ties to stitch the tops on. I mean, this should have been pretty much chicken friendly, you know, you live forever inside this cage kind of thing. Have yet to figure out how the predators got in. One downside, or I guess design flaw, <laughs> was that I did not include a way to clear the top off. And my buddy and I were building this. I was like, I wonder how, hey man, what, what do you think would be a good way to clear the top off? You know? And now that I think about it, it should have been a structure versus just putting all this stuff over it. Uh, he's like, I'll take a leaf blower to it. Well, yeah, kind of, but no, not really. It doesn't quite work. This is some of the decorative fencing that was here. It was here when we got here. And then... 
I'm gonna talk a little bit about. Uh, I said that I free cycle stuff. I got a big pile of junk. It's behind the, the sheds there so that my wife doesn't have to see it. Um, Cause again, you know, I free cycle as much junk as I can get if I think it's useful. Uh, we're going back over to where we started this kind of with the uh, boxes. This ground here is also not very good. It's extremely rocky. You can just see it's just filled with rock and stuff. But there were fruit trees growing here. That, believe it or not. Uh, no, one, not that one. Yeah, this is, that's actually, yeah, that's persimmon. Uh, you don't think that it is, but it is. It doesn't look like one, but that's what it is. It's persimmon, and then this one's persimmon as well. You don't, based on the bark, you don't think it's persimmon until you realize that it's persimmon and they're all over. And then they're falling everywhere and the next deer are there eating them. This is a, I like to build boxes with metal. I think I said that, I don't really know if I did, but I like to build boxes, grow boxes out of metal. Gatloom is cheap. It's easy to put together. Anything with a piercing screw can get through it. You know, and then you can put, you know, in this case, these are very old pressure treater posts. They're not leaching out into the ground. Uh, they were here when we got here, and um, by the looks of them, they were several years old then as well. But I just kept them and and reused them. Um, I tried to grow potatoes in this. Didn't do very well. I'm going to try another approach to doing that. Um, so Bumblebee Junction uh, has a really cool video on growing uh, root crops. Particularly, he's talking about carrots. Um, and and so I might kind of take a few additions from Bumblebee Junction. Of course, MI Gardener uh, is also established and very successful at, at, at root crops as well. Um, this is another asparagus box. These asparagus came from seed and they got all kinds of crap in them just from who knows, you know, weeds come from wherever. So we might have to redo that box. But like I said, when it comes to asparagus, I try to just put in a few more each year.